I have to tell y'all, in college I had a nickname. It was the Dirty Does because <laughs> I could eat a dozen in one sitting wow. solo in the middle of a day for oh no reason. God. I can't think of anywhere I would rather be than here at the headquarters of Tips, Treats, Cookie Delivery. We love this space. Previous to that, we had a really small office. You just celebrated opening your 40th location. Mm -hmm. That is a really big milestone. Where did this journey begin? We started in 1999 when we were college sophomores at the University of Texas. My now wonderful wife here stood me up on a date, actually. Oh, this sounds like an interesting story. Do tell. Um, sure. I was out with friends and my activity ran long and then I didn't call Leon to tell him I wasn't going to make it for the date that we had planned. I was staying at my mom's and she said, uh, well that was very rude, you should do something to apologize. And so I used to bake cookies for fun and so that was my apology. I baked him a set of cookies and I drove him over to his house and then when I got there they were still warm and he looked at them and he said, we're going to do this like pizza delivery. We're going to have a business. We can run it right out of my apartment and it'll be just like pizza delivery, except we're going to deliver warm cookies. And Tiff immediately said no. <laughs> I really thought that was that. Maybe 45 minutes later, she calls me and she says, I'll give it a try. She made me promise that we could only do it as a business if we did it Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. to midnight because we were students during the weekday and she wanted to go out with her friends on the weekends. <laughs> Look at you with your priorities straight. <laughs> well, you're 19, so. Worth it. We started in January of 99 and I think we went three days where we had the batches ready. We put flyers at dorms, uh, slid them underneath dorm rooms, uh, put them on cars around campus and we thought, okay, we'll sit back and we'll wait. The orders will pour in and literally nothing for three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but three days is not that long to wait. I still remember our first order, a girl named Amy from University Towers. Uh, don't know don't know where she is today, but God Amy, you, if you're Amy. out there, yeah. You're yeah, doing. that's right. We'd love to connect with you, Amy. Yes. <laughs> In fact, I think she called during the day when we weren't open. Right. And she said, I'd like to get an order for tonight, left a voicemail, and Leon called me right away. He said, we've got an order, uh, but it must be one of your friends. You know, who, which is your friend, Amy? I said, that's not a friend. That's a real customer. <laughs> and so we were excited. So Leon made that very first delivery yep. to University Towers dorm. That's kind of how we started dorms and apartments in West Campus. Yeah, yeah it used to be, Five orders a night would be plenty busy. We were just hanging out in our apartment. We would make the dough uh, during the day. We'd have chocolate chips and M&M, &M and we'd have all those chips in my sock drawer in my bedroom. We took the socks out. You take socks, and it was a clean sock. It's a clean sock drawer. Good to know, right? <laughs> well, the socks, yeah, we had yeah. removed the socks. Right, and so if you called and placed an order, we'd go into my bedroom, open the sock drawer out, and get a bag of chocolate chips and a bag of M&Ms, go to the kitchen and mix it into the dough. And uh, that's literally how small we were when we first started. We started skipping class to deliver cookies during the day to the offices downtown. Uh, and so we decided, hey, let's try to make this thing not just a, a late night cookie delivery concept. We think uh, there's a demand for the law firms, hospitals, yeah. downtown offices. Did you realize you were creating this social phenomenon? Like when people, when Tip Street shows up in an office, people go wild. I mean, I have chased a Tip Street's <laughs> delivery person before, and I know I'm not alone in that. Did you realize it would catch on in that way? Uh, certainly, we didn't realize that when we started, but I will say people were excited about it from the get-go. People always ask us, when we talk about the couple years after we graduated college and we went full-time, we weren't making any money, um, and we were working crazy hours, and they say, well, why didn't you want to quit? And the truth is we never considered quitting. And the reason was because the community was so excited about what we were doing that it would have seemed very odd to be like, well, never mind. Even though everybody loves it, we're just, you know, we're not making enough money, we're not gonna do it. And so, you know, we made it work and that excitement was there and it was building. Yeah, every other variable said we should have quit. The only thing kept, that kept us going was everybody was just so excited about it. Your heart was in it and so yeah. it was theirs. Yes, <laughs> I love yeah. it. What's the most magical delivery you've ever been a part of? Early on, we started realizing that what made us work is that we were connecting people in special moments. There was a little boy in Plano and he had been diagnosed with cancer. He was going through chemo and the way we knew about that was his grandparents were putting in an order for him and every week they would count down how many sessions left. So they would start in six left and then the next week another one would come in five left, four left and the staff at the store just noticed this. 
week after week, these orders coming through. And so they finally get down to one and they send it out and then they don't know. And so they actually just called the family. We've all been rooting for him. We want to know how he's doing and we're just wanting to pass along our thoughts. And they were surprised. They didn't realize that we would have even noticed that. The whole team was just so excited to hear that he was doing well. He had gotten through all of his chemo. He was in remission. And we were just so excited to just be a part of it. Just yeah. be a part of something uplifting. That yeah. is such a special story. Yeah. You've seen tremendous amount of growth over the last years. What do you think one of the biggest factors of y'all's success is? We just have that that unique opportunity to really be a part of somebody's moment. That privilege, really, to connect people together. So you can connect with someone thousands of miles away. We've had a soldier's order for their loved ones here at home. What do you think the sophomore in college version of you two would say about who you've become now? What do you think they would look at this uh, and that's think? That's a ridiculously great question. You probably think we were boring. Oh. <laughs> That's true, because we don't go out every Friday and Saturday night anymore, that's for sure. I think the sophomore would be kind of happy because I had interned my freshman and sophomore years. I remember sitting there, watching everybody uh, tick down the clock at 4.45, 4.50, waiting for 5 o'clock to happen. And they could not wait. As soon as 5 o'clock happened, they were the happiest, but they were miserable the rest of the day. And so I remember sitting there thinking, I'm going to school to be a business major and is this going to be my life? And so I definitely wanted to try to make it to where I was not one of those people who was just waiting for the clock, watching the clock. And so hopefully my 19 year old self would be kind of happy that it's not that way. We enjoy being here every single day. And what does the future hold? It's going to be sensible growth. Tiff is, her name is on the box. Her name is on the sign. She's not going to allow the quality to dip at all. So um, we'll grow as fast as we can while maintaining the kind of quality that we, and service that we want. There is just something about a Tip Streets cookie. So we may never know the recipes, but as long as I can just eat as many as possible, that is totally fine. I think we can work with that. I actually think we have some deliveries coming. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we do. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. See, just this box makes people light up. What were you thinking when you planned on the white with the blue ribbon? The first thing we did was look up um, on the internet, how can we package them? And then it was actually Leon's idea over here, Mr. Ribbon Man. <laughs> My one contribution. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so when you designed this, was it meant to be untied or do you do what I do and just get it off as fast you as know, you can? You know, I think far and away it's untied. Oh, but uh, Let I me think do it's it right. make your own adventure. Let you me can do just it either do it way. properly. A little more. I need to get a new nickname other than Dirty Does. <laughs> or you could live up to that nickname right here, right now. That's right. Oh, is that a challenge? <laughs> <gasps> They're so beautiful. These are chocolate chip. Yep, and then under there, looks like we've got some snickerdoodle. So, what's y'all's go to order? Oh, I'm oatmeal chocolate chip. I'm um, oh. snickerdoodle. So, can I dive in here? Do it. It's for you. We um, used to do, I think, two dozen cookies at a time. Two dozen cookies every 15 minutes. Now our stores are equipped to do 40 dozen every 15 minutes. Wow. It's oh, yeah. chocolate, folks. It's chocolate <laughs> milk and unlimited tip streets. Here, grab a milk. Let's mm -hmm. cheers. I love milk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so yes, much. Thank you so much. Cheers. cheers.